this has been a disruptive year for politics um, all over the world. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But um, <laughs> what do you make, sitting from where you sit, uh, what do you make of Brexit in the UK, uh, certainly the election of Donald Trump here? What, what, what's your perspective on all this? So what came before both of those events, and uh, it was perhaps not not as uh, a little more muted than those two events, uh, but was our election. And the experience in our election, uh, we saw indications of what was to come in 2016 and what we're, what we're likely to see come uh, over the next year in terms of we're seeing a lot of other disruptive or potentially disruptive elections and referendums around the world. Um, what happened in our election uh, that many don't either know about around the world and, uh, and how quickly we forget even in our own um, in our own country was we had an opposition uh, to us who was announcing a hotline to call in about barbaric cultural practices if you see your neighbor doing something. Uh, there was debate around uh, voting rights and whether a woman, uh, you know, the, whether it was a positive thing for a woman to be allowed to wear a niqab or a hijab. Uh, we had those kinds of discussions and uh, at the end of the day, uh, what though Canadians really wanted to talk about in that election was the plight of the middle class. And, or at least that's what we believed and we got elected so we think our theory was at least mm -hmm. a little bit right uh, and, we're, and we're working to deliver on that platform now. Um, but we knew that there was, a, there was a lot of angst amongst Canadians uh, and, and the, it's not that different than what we've been seeing south of the border in terms of the concerns and the priorities. And a lot of there was a lot of noise in our election too. And so you have to make choices when there's that kind of noise. And we decided we were gonna stay really focused on our economic message while not losing sight of our values along the way. Mm -hmm. So we continued and the Prime Minister said some controversial things, uh, including saying that uh, you didn't have the right to tell a woman what she could wear um, in the same way that he also ensured for the first time for our party that every, every person who was a candidate in our party who was running for election was pro-choice. He took a lot of positions like that that were controversial at the time. Um, but he spent the majority of his time speaking to Canadians about an economic plan and, a, and an economic growth plan. Mm -hmm. um, because I think the world is looking for governments to play a positive force in their lives right now. Mm -hmm. And they want to see interventions that are going to, I was saying to you, you know, you know all about the suburbs mm -hmm. and uh, from a book you've written. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of people here have said to me here and at the previous summit, they've said to me, well, politics, you know, you must find all this business talk strange and we find politics strange. We're actually, in many ways, we're all doing versions of the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're trying to connect to consumers, in our case we call them citizens, mm -hmm. and, uh, and trying to figure out how to best connect with them in their lives um, to support them. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what governments around the world have to figure out how to do, and it's a struggle. It is a day-to-day -day struggle. We feel a huge amount of pressure mm -hmm. every day in terms of how do we make sure that citizens are feeling like government continues to be a force for good. 